All right, this is it. The moment you've all been waiting for, commenting for, DMing me for, it's here. Welcome to my first solo living, one bedroom apartment tour. Welcome to my first ever solo living apartment tour. Let me give a little background on me to really make this video interesting for those of you that have no idea who I am. My name is Maddie, I'm 24 years old and I live in New York City. Yep, keep it going. <laughs> I live alone in a one bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. I first moved to New York City in 2015, so I've lived here for about six years. I've lived in many different apartments. So this is actually my fifth. New York City apartment, but the first apartment that I moved into completely on my own. I've always had at least one roommate the entire time that I've lived in the city, and I am uh, someone who just prefers to be alone. <laughs> I have always wanted to live by myself and to have my own space, and this year was just sort of the year that everything came together and came to fruition, and I was able to move out onto my own and get this beautiful place that I'm about to show you guys. Before I get into showing you the apartment and showing you how I decorated everything, let me answer all of the questions that you're already thinking and you want answers to right now, right here off the bat. Question number one is always, how much do you pay for a place like this? So because I moved during COVID, I got a really great price on this apartment. So for the first year for the lease that I just signed, my rent is $2,350 a month. But if I want to re-sign with this place, my rent is gonna go up to $2,900 a month. Is it a lot of money? Yes, it absolutely is. <laughs> I am someone who I would rather spend a bulk of my money on rent because one, I work from home, two, I film from home, three, I'm an introvert, four, I hate leaving the house. <laughs> I have a cat and she deserves a great fucking life. <laughs> Follow-up question to how much I'm paying is always, what the fuck do you do for work? <laughs> and I basically have two jobs at this point. I work a salaried nine to five job uh, at a skincare company and then I do YouTube. So if you wanna know how I afford this place, it is constantly working. <laughs> We're laughing, but it's not a joke. <laughs> If you're interested in knowing more about like the amenities of this place and what the apartment hunting process was like, I have a video on my channel where I show all the apartments that I looked at in this apartment hunt and show a lot more of the details place to place. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. I feel like that's probably the bulk of everything you're wondering right now. So without further ado, let me show you this fucking apartment. part of the apartment and then get into the good stuff which is the front door baby there's nothing over here besides my cat's litter box and a mirror but when you walk in this is what you see right when you walk in it's just this big open space that has turned into my living room kitchen and home office when i first got the apartment and was deciding how i was going to sort of arrange everything i knew that i wanted my bedroom to be just a bedroom as someone who works from home and someone who does social media video editing i spent a lot of time on my computer and on social media and i really value being able to disconnect and not consume content and not work. I wanted a very clear separation in like working and socializing and relaxing and like me time. So off the bat, even when I was looking for places, I knew that I wanted a bigger living area so that I could put my desk in the living room space. And this is how I ended up setting up the apartment. I knew straight off the bat when I did my vision boarding for this place that I really wanted a big green couch. There's just something about big green couches, sectionals specifically, that are so fucking sexy. Somebody online at some point said that all hot girls have a velvet green couch, and not to like just prove this theory correct, but use me as a pawn, baby. Push your agenda. This couch is from Article, as well as my little one-seater couch over there. They're both super comfortable, they're super cute. Definitely would highly recommend ordering from Article. Another investment piece for me was definitely this TV stand from West Elm. This was something that I saw online and just could find absolutely nothing like it that like satisfied my brain in the way that this one did. It's beautiful. Also, there's a ton of storage in this. All of my electronics, all of my camera equipment, 
um, all of my books and all of like my board games and other like hosting materials. Um, and I still have so much fucking space in here. So this was a great investment. Super psyched about this. I am someone that really loves hosting and entertaining people. I've always been like this, but I think especially after I adopted my cat, it became like a, well, you have to come here because Mango's here and Mango just deserves to never spend a second of her life alone. And that's really how I've always been because that's the type of house I was raised in. Like my family's house was always like the gathering house. All of our family holidays were always done at home with friends, like sleepovers. Everyone was always coming to my house. And I think growing up in a family that was always hosting has definitely made me that way as an adult. I always want everyone to come here. I love hosting. I love serving people. I love, you know, cooking for people, even though I'm not that fucking great at it, but I'll make you a damn good drink. And then we have my lovely bar cart in the corner of the living room. Above it is my neon sign from Girl New York. Um, Girl New York is a tattoo artist that I absolutely adore. My Lady Gaga, the Countess tattoo was done by her. I don't drink that much. I'm very much like a social drinker. Sometimes I'll have a glass of wine by myself, but I rarely like get drunk um, unless you're giving me mimosas on a Sunday morning, in which case I am getting drunk. <laughs> but I do like having a bar card here for hosting purposes and also it's pretty. And also I do love a good wine night. So then moving over here, we've got my little home office check out my outfit type station. I got this gorgeous mirror from Anthropology. There's like that huge gold mirror from Anthro that everyone always buys and it's an absurd amount of money. This one is like half the price of that one and it does the same goddamn job. I also have a tiny mini little balcony over here. I have a piano bench out there right now because that's the only thing that'll fit out there. And then we have my desk. This is really where the magic happens, as they say. Desk setup for me is really the most important part of where I live for me because so much of my life is spent on the internet, making videos, doing the damn thing. I've been eyeing this desk from West Elm for so long and I really was just ready for an upgrade because I had had the same desk since freshman year of college. Shit was falling apart. You would open up the drawer and it would fall off. Behind it, I have some pieces of artwork that I had in my old place. And then I have this little portrait right here, which maybe you recognize, it's me. <laughs> One of you guys, Louise, painted it and sent it over to me and it is just the coolest damn thing. So I have that hung up on this little wall above my desk. You'll notice a, a theme in a lot of my like apartment decor is bodies are something that I talk a lot about on my channel, particularly women's bodies, my body, my experience in my body. Really evident in the way that I choose to decorate that that is like a major part of my life as well. on to the kitchen. When I first saw this place, I knew that I needed to have a little high top table, a little breakfast bar, both to sit and eat at, to host, and just for like extra counter space because I don't have a ton of it. This kitchen was definitely one of the big sellers when I decided on this apartment because it is just so beautiful. And the lighting in this kitchen is really sick. Let me turn it on. We have those lights underneath the shelves and also this light that goes around. Those lights are super nice at night, like the sun is going down, I'm cooking dinner, those little lights really, it's fucking the mood lighting, dude. I go actually fucking bananas for it and there's so much of it in this apartment. Really love the exposed shelving here. I think that it's just so cute, it adds so much. These cups from West Elm are like my absolute fucking favorite. They're plastic, they're super cheap. There's not really much to say about the kitchen other than it's fucking sexy. There's a dishwasher right here that you cannot see because it's just like disguised in with the rest of the house, which I am obsessed with. It's also super nice being able to cook breakfast, cook dinner, and like look out onto this view all the time. Obviously I can't really show you exactly what my view looks like, but these like floor to ceiling windows are just the absolute best. All right, so moving past the kitchen over here, I've got a ton of storage closets, which is fucking fantastic. And then, 
we have my bathroom. If you guys remember my old bathroom, you know that it was literally like a fucking four by four room. We could barely do anything in it. And I am, I mean, I work in skincare and I'm a skincare fanatic. So I have a lot of bathroom products that need some home. I'm super psyched this place not only had a larger bathroom, but that it was just like a fucking sexy bathroom. I've said this in videos before, but there is something about a nice looking bathroom that just makes me want to get fucked. I don't even really like shower sex like that, but like maybe I would in a bathroom like this. The last and maybe the only shower I've ever had sex in is this shower, um, which is, the, well, e, uh, <laughs> that was my first apartment that I lived in. Um, and that was a clip from a short film that I made. And everyone thought that like we made the bathroom gross for the film. We did it. It just always looked like that. So that's the shower, the fucking hallway shower that I have had shower sex in. So you know what? Although that was probably an ideal setup to be fucked in, um, maybe the ambiance was so fucking bad that it sort of canceled it all out. Anyways, <laughs> it's a bathroom, right? Not a ton to say here other than please look inside my skincare cabinet because that shit is fucking hot. So you walk out of the bathroom and then right here is my bedroom. <laughs> I really wanted my bedroom to just be a space for sleeping and for fucking chilling out I didn't want anything interesting to be in here. So the room is pretty fucking plain for the most part I know people who are like actually minimalists are hearing me talk be like there's nothing about this room That's plain, but to me. This is like bare bones. I did fucking nothing in here <laughs> Obviously main attraction in this room is my bed which I have some fucking beef with that I'd like to address and I'd actually would like to directly call out fucking any influencer that has ever promoted linen bedding. How does it feel to be fucking liars? I, when I moved into this apartment, invested in nice linen bedding because I was told that it was cooling. Anyone who works on a marketing team of a company that sells fucking linen bedding, you need to take that word out of your vocabulary because linen bedding has to be the hottest fucking bedding I've ever slept in in my entire life. I bought into it because I run hot naturally and I always want my the room that I sleep in to be like fucking 55 degrees. Like I want to be teeth chattering. I want to be freezing. I grew up in Massachusetts baby, okay? I want to feel like I'm sleeping in a snowbank. Period. I was told that linen bedding was gonna give me the experience of like, oh, I'm laying in bed and I'm protected from monsters, but I'm also not sweating my fucking tits off at the same time. I was lied to. I was lied to and you were lied to too. Do not buy linen bedding if you run hot. Anyways, you see this bedding. Uh, I'm changing this. I'm going back to my fucking regular regular fucking $50 cotton bedding because I'm tired of this shit. Anyways, I've got this cute blanket on top of my bed. <laughs> this blanket is so cute. It's like uh, an artist series from Urban Outfitters. Two people just being a little intimate. Love it, live for it. The lamp on my side table is truly the star of the show. This is probably one of my favorite things in the entire apartment. She's gorgeous. She's everything I've ever wanted her to be. And then right over here, we have a little reading nook with another neon sign that I have. And then we have these cool fucking graffiti paintings that I got, um, which I am obsessed with. They are two different sizes. That would bother some people. It does not bother me. And then if you look at the ground, I have two rugs layered in sort of a weird way. I accidentally bought a rug the size of the entire room. I did not intend to do that. <laughs> because it's my bedroom, I actually kind of love the way that it came out. Um, and it definitely just feels a lot cozier, makes me a lot sleepier somehow. Um, and I think the two rugs that I chose to layer just look great together. And that's it. That's really the full tour of my first solo living apartment here in New York. I'm gonna link 
damn near everything down in the description down below. I will always look for literally fucking everything I have and try to put it in the description. If it's not in the description, it means that it is sold out or it's no longer being sold. I promise you, I'm linking fucking everything down below. Be sure to follow me on the rest of my social media, particularly Instagram, because I'm sexy and I just like deserve that. And that's where we're at as a society right now. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.